Welcome to Group 5's presentation for our Sunday lessons quarter story. Today we are looking at the topic of mathematics, basically sub area of measurement. Have you ever wondered where we got our meter rule from? Do you just go through life not thinking about measurement? Human beings on our own look at measurement in relation to time and space. But did you know the development of this meter rule did not just happen by chance? Many years ago, Egyptian culture focused their measurement on one part. I am sure all of us are familiar with certain measurement aspects as the span, a digit, or even a cubit. All these measurements were used by early peoples of the earth so that they could make their lives simple. Today in mathematics, as we look in measurement, we want to look at the development of measurement instruments, more likely today the metric system. I want you to sit back and relax. Our lesson will inform you as to how we use measurement in our day to day activities. Come and share this journey with us. Let's begin our measurement journey by visiting the Peninsula Fine Arts Center in Newport News, Virginia. People have been measuring things for thousands of years. Hey, that's one thing we measure, time. What are some of the other things we measure? Temperature. How hot is it? Volume. How much space is in your garage? That's the weight. How heavy is it? Length. How long is your string? Get this. The ancient Egyptians used their fingers, hands, and even arms to measure things. There were no measuring tools like rulers back then. The width of one finger was a digit, and the width of four fingers was a palm. Here's another ancient Egyptian measurement. Open your hand and spread out your fingers just like this. The distance from the tip of your thumb to the end of your little pinky was called a span. The ancient Egyptians also created a measurement called the cubit. If you bend your arm, the distance from the elbow to the tip of your middle finger was a cubit. In the ancient world, the cubit was the most popular way to measure length. So you see, all these units of measurement were based on something familiar to ancient people. Body parts. Hey, hi, bye. Of course, using your hand or elbow to measure a pyramid would take forever. Not only that, it's not an accurate or exact measurement. Here's why. My friend Jimmy is taller than I am. It takes four of my cubic arm lengths, but only three of his to measure my bike. How can we get the same measurement if our arms are different lengths? Good point. In ancient Egypt, it was up to the pharaoh to decide how to make measurements standard or the same for all situations. So the standard cubit length was set by the length of the pharaoh's arm. But even then, it could be pretty tough measuring a pyramid with a pharaoh under your arm. As time went on, people created many ways to measure things. Unfortunately, none of them were the same when it came to mathematics. You see, scientists couldn't repeat each other's experiments because there was not an agreed-upon standard of measurement. Today, our world operates according to two different systems of measurement. Here's some expert help. In the U.S. standard system, the inch, foot, yard, and mile developed from traditional practices of measurement dating back to ancient times. One disadvantage of the U.S. standard system is the different size units often have no simple relationship to each other. For instance, there are 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, 1,760 yards, or 5,280 feet in a mile. Converting different units of measurement, like miles to inches, requires some math. Here's an example. It's about 431 miles from Los Angeles to San Francisco. To convert these miles into inches, simply multiply the number of miles, 431, by the number of feet in a mile, 5,280, by the number of inches in a foot, 12. 431 miles converts to 27,308,169 inches. Whew. Using the decimal system is a much easier way to measure and change units. Because earlier systems of measuring units were so confusing, the decimal system was devised. This system is based on tens and multiples of tens. Tenth numbers or decimals are easier to use than the U.S. standard system, which is based on twelfths. One advantage of the decimal system is the decimal point. Depending upon where it is moved, 
Whole numbers can become fractions or multiples of tens. Thanks, Dr. Morgan. We now know why there is a metric system of measurement. Yep, and the metric system is based on the meter. The original meter was not the length of someone's finger or arm. Instead, it represented one ten millionth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator. Hey, the meter is the most widely used measurement system for scientific work. Using the metric system, we can easily convert units with some mental math. For example, we know Los Angeles is approximately 600 kilometers from San Francisco. Now, if we want to know that same distance in in meters, for example, all we have to do is multiply by a thousand. Why? Because there's 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So you multiply 600 times 1,000, and you get 600,000 meters. 600 kilometers is the same as 600,000 meters. The Egyptians would have appreciated the meter stick. It's better than a pharaoh's arm. Wasn't that a refreshing video? I'm sure you would have been informed by now as to what measurement is all about. If not, you can always look back in our housing, look at our photo story, and just take a look. I'm sure you would have learned about the meter, you'd have learned about distance, temperature, all these things. As you go through today, be open to the wonderful journey. Remember, the computer.